Well, six o'clock straight up. So let's get started. Welcome everybody to the uh, two two of twenty two meeting of the Iowa City Planning and Zoning Commission. We'll start off. I'll note for attendance those physically present are Craig Townsend Hench and Signs, and participating via Zoom. Zoom is she your phone or Zoom is Padrone. So we have a quorum. First item on the agenda is public discussion of any item not on the agenda. If there's a member of the public that would like to address the commission and talk about a topic that's not on the, tonight's agenda, now is your opportunity. Please come forward and seeing no one approaching, last call. <laughs> We're a friendly group. We like to hear from people. We'll go to um, item number four. This is case number SUB 21-0012. The loca location is the southwest corner of Slothour Road in Melrose Avenue, IWV Road Southwest. This is an application for, per for a preliminary plat of IWV Commercial Park, a 62.36 acre two lot commercial subdivision. Ann? Thank you, Chair. Ann Russett with Neighborhood and Development Services. As the chair mentioned, this is a preliminary plat application. Here's an aerial of the project site. It's the southwest corner of IWV Road Southwest and Sloth Tower Road. Here is a zoning map. This land was recently rezoned to intensive commercial. And in terms of background, in addition to that recent rezoning, there was also a comprehensive plan amendment that came before the commission and an annexation, and all of those have been uh, received their approvals by the city council and in the case of the annexation, the state. With the rezoning, there were several conditions, some of which relate to this plat, so I wanted to go over these. Uh, the conditions include a requirement that the applicant subdivide the land to follow the new zoning boundaries. And that plat must contain a buffer easement that's generally 350 feet wide along the southern end of the property <coughs> and a dedication of right of way along Sloth Power Road. And both of those items are addressed in this plat, which I'll point out shortly. Additional in conditions include at final platting, the owner contributing 25% of the cost of upgrading Sloth Power Road to collector street standards installing landscaping on the frontage of Slothower Road and IWV Road, and improving Slothower Road at any proposed access points. And we anticipate that this will, this access point will be identified uh, further in the future at site plan approval. The last condition is that the lots fronting IWV and Slothower loading areas and outdoor storage shall not be located between the front facade of the principal structure and the public right of way. Here's an image of the preliminary plat. You can see that there are two, two lots. Uh, lot two fronts IWV Road, lot one fronts IWV Road and Sloth Tower Road. At the southern end of the plat, you can see the 350 foot vegetative buffer that's identified, which was a condition of the rezoning. And along the east side, along Sloth Tower, the plat identifies the additional right of way that should be dedicated to the city. Also along the southern boundary of the plat, you can see the stormwater detention basins in blue. And then the other colors that you see here in yellow and green are the sensitive areas and the associated buffers. In terms of the comprehensive plan, as I mentioned before, the recent amendment um, changed the land use designation to intensive commercial for both the comprehensive plan and the Southwest district plan and identified the Southern end of the land area as open space or a vegetative noise buffer. The proposed plat is consistent with the direction of the comprehensive plan as it proposes two commercial lots and does incorporate that 350 foot wide vegetative buffer. In terms of sensitive areas, the plat identifies the stream corridor and associated buffers and the wetlands and the buffers and this plat actually meets the base requirements of our sensitive areas ordinance. In terms of stormwater management, um, that's provided through two separate basins, which are on the southern end of the property and Public Works has reviewed their preliminary stormwater management plan and approved it. 
The role of the commission tonight is to determine if the preliminary plat complies with the city's subdivision regulations and other applicable, applicable codes, as well as the comprehensive plan. Staff recommends approval of SUB 21-0012, an application submitted by IWV Holdings for a preliminary plat of the IWV Commercial Park subdivision. And this last slide just shows the next steps in the general uh, land development process. They've already done the comprehensive plan amendment, annexation and rezoning. Right now they're at the preliminary platting stage and future stages would be the final plat, which would go to city council and then administrative reviews by staff in terms of site plan and building permits. And that, that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ann. Any questions of Ann by members of the commission? Not for me. And the annexation was approved by City Development Board? It was. Okay. I just hadn't heard on that one, so. At this point, they're not sure what they're going to put on that land, is that correct? That's that's my understanding. Will that come back to us before, I mean, after they decide what's actually going there? It will not. Um, that would be a, a site plan review and building permit review by staff. All right, any other questions? All right, thanks, Ann. Um, now we'll open the public hearing on on this issue. Um, applicant or applicant's representative, John, are you gonna speak? Thank you, John Marner with MMS Consultants representing the applicant. I think Ann covered everything. And as she mentioned previously, when, we, when the commission considered and the council considered the uh, CZA and the zoning and the conditional or the uh, comprehensive plan amendments, made an effort to incorporate those sensitive features on the Southern portion of the property uh, to maintain them. We placed the stormwater management in that Southern portion of the property all the way across the extent of the property from East to West, and then placed that 350 foot buffer again to try to provide some separation from the neighboring properties and address some of those concerns. And I'm available for any questions if there are any. Uh, speaking of separation, simply it's a matter of, of curiosity. Um, from the western border of uh, parcel number two, how far is it to the city landfill um, parcels? I just, I should have looked that up on a map and it, it just seems like it's not very far and I just thought maybe you'd know. It's not, it's about, uh, it, it's, it's probably about 500 feet. Okay. It, it tapers a little bit. It follows the stream corridor, the western, I'm sorry, the western boundary follows the stream corridor on the, on that side. So it tapers, it It can run anywhere from maybe 300 to 500 feet. All right. Thank you. Any questions for John, five members of the commission? I'll have them. All right. Thank you kindly. Thank you. Um, this is public hearing. If there's any member of the public that would like to address the commission on this, on this uh, uh, preliminary plat, now's your opportunity. Uh, yes. Uh, come up to the lectern and sign in, please. <clears throat> yeah, my name is Dan Lapatka. I have a little property near the landfill. Um, just curious question for John. I've noticed on that, I think on that property that you're representing, I think I've seen a lot of equipment there for CIFCO for the, is, is that the right property or my on property? There's a lot of the uh, further to the west. It's not the same property as the, the Sipco property. Okay, I'm just curious. Um, a bunch of landowners in Johnson County were opposed to a Sipco. They're an electric transmission utility line company. And uh, in 2018, they wanted to put through like a 17 mile long transmission line straight through everyone's farms. And we all had a big meeting at uh, I think it was a South Park building in North Liberty. Speak into the microphone, please. So we all had a big meeting at a South Park uh, or South Slope building, I think, in North Liberty in 2018. And we overwhelmingly rejected it. And for some reason, without notification this year, they just are building transmission lines across the county from, I think, Swisher down to like Lone Tree or something without any notification. And, and I had received personal guarantee from Civco that um, they wouldn't do anything without notifying people of their next step. So I've, I've noticed in the area, I've seen, of course, all their towers going up at the beginning stages of towers being erected. And there's a big depot on Sloth Hour Road, just right off of Sloth Hour, um, of just tons of equipment there. So just, just curious what relation this commercial developer has to 
um, Civco, or and maybe other members of the public can, could contribute. That's all. All right. Thank you very much. Any any other members of the public would try, like to address the commission on this application? Second call. Seeing none, we'll close the public meeting. Could we uh, all entertain a motion for on this item? I so moved. Motion by signs is second. A second. Yeah. Second by Townson. Discussion. Um, I'll just make a comment. I this is uh, we've looked at this multiple times. We had uh, annexation, comprehensive plan amendment, and re rezoning. I think this is a uh, really good thing for Iowa City. Intensive commercial is necessary to have a healthy, vibrant city. I think the location is great. And I think the plat looks fine. So any other discussion? I would agree. I think we, you know, they did address all of our initial, some of our initial concerns, desires around uh, uh, isolating the property and uh, I think they did a good job. I'm good with it. <laughs> okay. All those in favor of, of approving this application, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, signify aye. by saying aye. So, Maria, you were a, a, an a aye. aye. Yep. Okay. Yes, I support the project and I don't have any comments. Okay. Thank you kindly. So, it, uh, it was approved by a vote of one, two, three, four, five, five to zero. <laughs> uh, next item on the agenda is. Maria, I, I, I apologize. I should have gave you a chance to speak up. So, so that's my apology and my bad. So I'll do better on this. No, one. no, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I just am so jealous of you being in Argentina and that we're here. So <laughs> my, my envy is probably coming through. So item number five, consideration of the good neighbor policy. Anne. Thank you, Chair. Um, at the last meeting, uh, we asked the commission to continue this item to tonight. So planning staff could work with the city attorney's office on some of the language in the policy, which we have done. So that po new policy is before you tonight. Um, and as I mentioned at the last meeting, this is a policy. It outlines the city's expectations for good neighbor meetings. It is not a regulatory requirement. So I'm just going to put the policy up on the screen here and highlight of a few of the components. There are uh, three sections that are incorporated into this policy. The first section is the purpose, which talks about the interest of encouraging um, applicants to promote dialogue between uh, land developers and neighboring residents to foster goodwill and hopefully resolve any concerns that may come up. In terms of the meetings themselves, that's discussed in section two, and it discusses generally what the good neighbor meeting is, who generally attends, and um, staff um, endeavoring to attend, the, attend those meetings as well. In part B, it talks about what types of land development applications should use the good neighbor policy, and that includes annexations, comprehensive plan amendments, and associated rezonings, and project-specific uh, amendments to the zoning map. The last part of section three talks about urban planning staff being available to assist applicants with suggesting locations for good neighbor meetings, reviewing draft notices, distribution lists, as well as the post meeting report. The third section discusses the process. First, it discusses the date and time. And it talks about selecting a date and time for the meeting no less than seven days prior to the scheduled planning and zoning commission meeting. It also talks about considering holding additional good neighbor meetings if the application does not go through the process in a relatively quick manner. Um, if, it, if, it's, if it's stagnant, if there's multiple revisions, um, if it hasn't been approved in about 24 months, it recommends holding another good neighbor meeting. In terms of locations, meetings can be held in person or online. For in-person meetings, the, the location of the meeting should be close to the project site if possible. In terms of the notice, the notice should be sent out to all owners and occupants of properties listed on the assessor's website within 500 feet of the subject property. And it should be sent out seven days prior to the good neighbor meeting. 
And it also discusses that staff may have additional groups of people um, that we recommend be notified of the good neighbor meeting. And we will provide that information to applicants to share as well. The last section is the reporting and we request that the applicant, applicant submit a summary report of the meeting, which we will provide to the commission and council. That is a summary of the policy and I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Ann from members of the commission? I just think this is much better than it was and I'm glad we waited a month and it's <laughs> quite clear to me. I just have a curiosity question you know, when you talk about the owners and occupants on the assessor's website, are the occupants on the assessor's website? They are sometimes, oh. not always. Um, it okay. depends on the, the site, but sometimes, sometimes they are. And when they are, we will make sure that they are notified. Okay. Okay. So, so only if the occupants are on the assessor's website, do you have a record of them? Yeah. And it's not actually their name. It will just be unit one, unit two, unit three. So we will know how many units are in that building. So you'll send it to occupant unit one. Exactly. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's more the, the properties are listed on the assessor's website, yeah. not yes. the names of the occupants. Right. I got it now. So if it's a condo, you know, then we know there are 12 it, yeah. units yeah. in that building. We should send notices to 12 different people. Okay. Um, you that know. makes sense. Thank you. And would this be effective upon approval by the, the city <clears throat> council? Is that the effective date? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. And I'd just like to say, I, I'm glad that it seems that we've been heard. The it's, it's A lot of it was comments from people that came in that said that had, they hadn't been notified of things that are happening. And I guess this is just a way to say, it. I think we've heard them and you've heard us. So thank you. Yeah. And I'm sure that there will still be confusion about from people who say nobody They're building told me. this building right in my backyard. And it's something that will never come to PNC because it's zoned properly. And it's, you know, there will always be confusion. But I think that this does this much, it's much better. This is it's. it's pretty darn clear and I do appreciate staff's time on on putting it together because it's very succinct very clear to me and hopefully will result in some more better communication right and we're hoping that it doesn't take an excess amount of staff time no it, it'll be it, it's basically what we're doing now just formally adopted all right um, and I, I did fail to mention that we did receive one piece of correspondence on this. I was which... going to bring that up. Okay. Um, um, Y'all done, Anne? Yes, thank you. Since we have a small group tonight, is there anybody from the public who'd like to address the commission on this item? Yes, sir. State your name again. Limit your comments to three minutes, please. Uh, yeah, Dan Lepatka again. I'm not here for this reason, but uh, it's new to me. I don't really know what the good neighbor policy is. Is it does it apply just to residential or to all zoning uh, designations, including commercial? Does anyone know? Yeah, so why, rezoning. Why, why isn't it split into different uh, different radii? Maybe for residential, you only need three to five hundred feet. For commercial, it seems like you might need five thousand feet. Uh, I mean, this seems like small town stuff. Uh, I can imagine nationwide, and how does this policy compare uh, analogously to other uh, yeah. municipalities or states or counties nationwide? It, it seems like certainly in some locations, you might want many, 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 many miles of radii of notification. Um, I, I can't imagine 500 feet, uh, it might suffice for residential, but for commercial, it seems ridiculously small. So that's just a first impression. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> Seeing nobody else, is there a motion for approval of this uh, amended policy? So moved. <laughs> second. So we got a motion by Townsend and a second by Craig. Discussion? Um, my discussion is I am very happy. I think this is, is very good. It's adequate. It's frankly better than any other jurisdiction that I'm aware of. I think um, the intention is so that developers can hear what the neighbors have to say and hopefully resolve some issues before they come to planning and zoning. Um, I'm not naive at all to think that this is gonna be a magic bullet and gonna solve um, the issues. I am 
quite confident after this is implemented, the first thing we'll hear from somebody at a public hearing is I didn't re receive a notification. But I think this is, uh, you know, this is what being a city and a community and um, is all about and trying to communicate with one another and, and that presumption of goodwill rather than always thinking somebody's trying to pull something. And so I think this is a great thing and I'm very happy this is happening. And so I applaud staff for pursuing this and I applaud the council for considering this. Any further discussion? I just wanted to address the, the comment made. If I recall early on in this process, staff did some research with other cities and communities and came up with some numbers. And, and at that point, 500 was a pretty generous number in what they found across some of our comparable sites. So I just wanted to share that. That's what I was referring to by, um, I had a deep memory of those numbers. I couldn't come up with them, but I remember at the time okay. thinking that we were going to be um, uh, in line. Pretty good. Much larger than other people are at least in line minimally. And and generally, we're talking about within the city limits of Iowa City. True. And so, you know, if you're used to a rural area, I could see why 500 feet might sound like a small amount, but within the That's city limits point. of Iowa yeah. City. And as I recall, Anne, I think you mentioned there's going to be something online about things that are going on in planning and zoning. Uh, that if you want to look at it, you can see what uh, new buildings are going up. And is that correct? Well, we have um, we have our new permitting software, which is a searchable database. Um, so anyone can use it. Any member of the public can search a site, search a search by address or search by um, case number, project name even, and get more information on on a particular development. Very good. And I will give a little plug for that new system. I used it for the first time last week to research some history of the property we just bought for our office. And it, it was, I mean, I used to, I never could find anything on the site before. And I was able to, I was able to get permits back to 1997 or something like that. So I was very impressed. Any further discussion? <laughs> Maria, do you have any discussion on this? I, I do. I have a comment and on the section number three in the process, in the date and time, there is no nothing about the time actually. So, but I'm hopeful that the developers will choose the time the, when it's um, the most easiest for everybody to attend. Um, for example, in the evening, if that makes sense. But that was all. Okay, thank that you. That was very my good. only comment. All right, thank you. Um, all those in favor of approval of this policy signify by saying aye. 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 All those uh, opposed signify by saying nay. Hearing no nays, this is approved five to zero. Next item on the agenda, consideration of meeting minutes of January 5, 2022. Uh, are there any major additions or corrections that any member would like to note? And if there are no major corrections or additions, could I have a motion for approval? So moved. Motion by signs. Is second. there a second? Townsend. Seconds by Townsend. Second by Townsend. Discussion? None. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Maria? Aye. Aye. Sorry. Thank you. Um, uh, I didn't know if I could vote on this because I wasn't on the meeting. Well, um, but I did watch the yeah. YouTube yeah. video. Okay, very good. Uh, anybody opposed? Signify by saying nay. Hearing no nays, is approved five to zero. Number seven, planning and zoning information. Anne? Um, one update for the commission tonight. I wanted to introduce two staff, two new associate planners with our department, um, Parker Walsh and, and Esther Teta. Um, it's Parker's second week, I believe, and uh, Esther's fourth. Wow. So you should be seeing them. A four hour meeting for them. So, <laughs> What's that? Can we have a four hour meeting for them? So they really got broken in, right? Parker and Esther, could you come up and just tell us briefly about yourself? So we, you know, we're going to be seeing lots of each other. So it'd be nice to, <laughs> to make sure we have names and faces together. And this is unusual to have such a short meeting. Yeah. So that's why we get to be more <laughs> informal. <laughs> Um, hello, everyone. My name is Esther, and I just graduated from Iowa State University, and I came here. Um, happy to meet everyone. And I'm originally from Ghana, so yeah. 
<laughs> Welcome. We'll see you a lot. Thank you very much. <laughs> Look forward to your first report. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Parker Walsh. I'm also a graduate from Iowa State, and I've just recently moved out here to finally begin my career. I'm very excited. All right. Welcome. As an Iowa State grad myself, you can survive in this town. <laughs> it's probably painful, but it's so <laughs> it is Barely. A little, yeah. Except is for game there day. Is urban regional planning <laughs> program at Iowa State? I didn't know there was. There is. No, interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Anne? Any comments from the commission? I would like to make one. As soon as I said, I saw Mark reach for microphone. Oh, I'm just trying to adjust it. Oh. <laughs> I would like to uh, commend Mark Sines and Billy Townsend. I noticed from today's um, minutes <laughs> that they have perfect attendance, 10 meetings in a row. It's so hard. Um, for, you know, the life goes on and everybody has lots of conflicts. So I just want to commend them because civic dedication it needs to be recognized and appreciated. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I wanted to add um, that I, I'm going to choke up a little bit here, but a very good friend and colleague of mine, Carol Sbaziani, who I worked with at the library for many years, passed away this week. Hmm. And she was a force to be reckoned with. And was very active in the League of Women Voters, Johnson County, and other civic organizations, and worked very hard on issues like fair housing and urban renewal back in the day. And you think about, you know, as I was coming here tonight, I thought it takes committed people to work on those issues and sit through those meetings and hammer these issues out and what those people did 40 and 50 years ago, you know, is the basis for what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. And exactly. it's just hopefully progress in the right direction always, but it had to start someplace. I mean, you know, I, I can still remember her talking about going door to door to get petitions signed to have Iowa City adopt a fair housing ordinance. I mean, imagine. <laughs> so we've come a long way, thanks to people like Carol, who saw something that wasn't right and went out and tried to fix it. And she usually did. Would you share with us Carol's name again? Carol Spaziani. Spaziani. Mm -hmm. Well, my that condolences over the death of your friend. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. That's really cool. Any other comments? Hearing none, um, item number eight, adjournment. Is there a motion for adjournment? <laughs> so moved. moved. Motion by Craig. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second by Townsend. <laughs> Discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> All right. So uh, adjournment is approved five to zero. We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody.